Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining my presentation today. I'm Doria and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of my co-author Sophia and Anderson. And today I, the topic I will present is uh, Bayesian identifiability and uh, estimation and uh, diagnostic techniques for gross mixture model uh, to illustrate the heterogeneity in longitudinal data. Uh, so here is the offline for today's intro, uh, presentation. First, uh, uh, I will present a way to visualize the within class heterogeneity, and then I will demonstrate uh, some problematic behaviors of uh, MCMC method due to the identifiability issue. And then I will demonstrate uh, some diagnostic tools and also the recommendations to minimize this issue and uh, to investigate their performance through a simulation study. So a quick introduction about a GMM. A gross mixture model is uh, a finite mixture of gross curve model, which uh, for each class we have a class mean trajectory, and uh, the class mean trajectory can be linear or quadratic. And then for this study, we illustrate through an application using a national longitudinal study of youth. And we use this to uncover the latent trajectory patterns underlying students' reading ability. So here is a short data background. We have 405 children aged from 4 to 16. And later in the visualization, I will present uh, their uh, uh, class-specific uh, trajectory curves. And here is uh, the, here this, uh, yeah, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these uh, curves are the class-specific trajectory curves uh, and uh, with different colors represent the different class, uh, which you can see. Uh, class three uh, is this uh, red lines, red, red curves, which uh, starts uh, at lower level at uh, age six, and uh, then uh, they are steady progressor, and then they end at relative lower level. But uh, unlike a previous study, we also have this shaded area to cover within class heterogeneity uh, between uh, subjects. And uh, then we can see there are some, also some children, they even surpass class three, which is the early bloomer class. So also from this uh, figure, you can see the box plot. Uh, this is the observed uh, real data, the observed data at different ages. So from this figure, we can compare the model implied trajectory versus the observed data. Uh, so, uh, what is uh, Bayesian identifiability? Uh, then I will quick uh, uh, introduce the definition so that uh, we are on the same page. So, the Bayesian identifiability defined by David, uh, that is the data or likelihood provide nothing so that uh, uh, our posterior distribution is the same to the prior distribution. And in our study, we argue that for latent variable models or hierarchical models, the Bayesian identifiability is equivalent to the likelihood identifiability if the marginal likelihood is used. Then I will, later I will cover how to specify the marginal likelihood distribution in GMMs. But before that, I will introduce the uh, two common uh, non-identifiability issue in a uh, finite mixture model or um, gross mixture model. That is the first uh, labeling switch, labeling non-identifiability. That is uh, the identifiability, the likelihood uh, stays uh, at the same if we switch the class. But this issue can be addressed, uh, for example, using the label switch package in R and that can also be using a, a com, compa, combined with Stan. And uh, then um, the 
degenerate non-identifiability is uh, in our study today. Uh, I will focus on the type one uh, non-identifiability issue that occurs when class probability, one or more class probability of mixing proportion are zero that result in the class specific parameter of that class are nearly non-identified. So then I will specify how to spe uh, formalize the GMM. So for this equation, you can say we have Uh, we have uh, these uh, two types of latent variables. First one is uh, categorical latent variables, uh, labeled as uh, WJ, uh, follows a multinomial distribution. And uh, also we have random effects, all known as continuous latent variable. So in this equation, we're conditioning on both types of latent variables. And uh, then uh, this follows normal distribution with mean and uh, variance term. Uh, so then we want to specify the marginal likelihood. So within each class, we marginalize over random effects R, Rij and uh, R1j and R2j, which follows a multinomial, uh, multivariant normal distribution. Uh, with the uh, um, mean vectors and uh, the design ma matrix for random effects. And uh, also the marginal likelihood for entire data set can be written as the product over subject J summing over uh, uh, class K. And uh, this lambda K is uh, the probability for class K. So then I will, uh, this present, this has a step-step breakdown of Stanko segment to illustrate how can we specify this marginal likelihood in Stan. So first we compute the log uh, LJK by using this user-defined function block and uh, then we uh, calculate this part uh, by uh, use this uh, defined function and uh, uh, Finally, we sum over the class and the subject to obtain this uh, uh, log likelihood and uh, add that to the log posterior. And uh, then if we use the common practice that is specified vague or diffuse prior, uh, for example, for class uh, probability, we specify durational prior with uh, concentration <coughs> parameter. And then for the random effects, uh, standard deviation, we specify half cauche or half normal, and then there's uh, our common use. But if we focus on uh, the, uh, follow the common use, use this diffuse or um, vague prior, we will have some degenerate issues. This type one problem, problematic behavior is uh, one or more class uh, are being close to zero. This can manifest in two ways. For example, in first one, the, the top, top one shows uh, mini class behavior, which we can say, uh, which we can say this, uh, these are trace plot of 100 iterations of three class parameters, three class probabilities. We can see one of class probabilities are nearly zero for the entire chain. And also the, uh, they uh, barely switched uh, uh, compared to uh, another two classes. And the second uh, problematic behavior is this stack chain behavior. That is, uh, we can say this, uh, for these iterations, the sample does not move across iterations. Uh, so what's the problem of that? So if this uh, one or more class uh, probabilities uh, being close to zero, and then the class uh, specific parameter um, are not uh, identified, and then they will approximately join from the prior. For example, this QQ plot shows their posterior samples are uh, equivalent, uh, are similar to their prior distribution, which show like two 
a class specific parameter as examples. And uh, then uh, what's the problem then? Uh, the problem is uh, then the draw of this class specific parameter can be incompatible with the data. For example, for this figure, if we compare the box plots to the model implied uh, uh, class uh, trajectory curves, we can see that uh, they uh, are very they are very uh, incompatible. And also the class one and two, their class probabilities are nearly zero, so that uh, the data and the model implied the trajectories uh, are very incompatible. So this uh, reinforces this circle, this self-perpetuating sampling of this nearly degenerate parameter. And then uh, we can have the uh, very problematic inference and uh, also the bad convergence issue. So how to diagnose take uh, this issue? First, uh, we, use, we initial screening the, uh, this issue based on R height and the effect sample size and also the trace plot as we shown before. But I also present uh, some uh, uh, tools, for example, the moving standard deviation to diagnose stack, stack chain behavior, and also the clustering algorithm to, to diagnose the miniscule diagnostic, and also this DI index. Uh, if the DI index close to 100, that means the class probability for all subjects are nearly zero that manifest uh, that uh, manifest these minuscule behaviors. So then if we use uh, summarize draw function in posterior function, we, uh, we to diagnose this uh, uh, stack chain behavior, we can see the R height flag as infinite and the effect sample size report as NA to uh, show this problem. But if we use the monitor, function in Stan, it uh, can firstly report uh, the perfect convergence for this uh, uh, persistent uh, stack chain behavior that report uh, R height of one and the effect sample size equivalent to the uh, number of post, post warm up iterations that can be the problem. And then uh, for, yeah, for this uh, uh, stack chain behavior, we, we can use, um, I present, we provide this uh, uh, diagnostic tools as this one. We can see the moving standard deviation of uh, class parameter are near, uh, they are, are zero for the entire chains. And uh, then for the minuscule class, we present uh, two diagnostic plots. Uh, for example, this uh, uh, clustering plot, uh, we can see we can uh, classify uh, the minuscule class uh, by uh, hard to identify the, uh, by these uh, uh, black uh, dots. And uh, then the next plot, the DI plot, we can see if DI close to 100, that also manifests this minuscule class behavior. So uh, in our simulation study, we also simulate uh, the data from the uh, using a well-behaved three class solutions uh, and uh, 200 chains uh, for each combination of priors. Uh, so the combination priors is uh, the Dirichlet priors with concentration parameters two, four, six, and uh, the standard deviation priors uh, um, we use half, half Cauchy five and uh, uh, half normal with uh, scale parameter. So for this simulation result, we can say uh, for stack chain behavior, if we use uh, half Cauchy prior, we can have this problem. But if we, we use half normal prior, with, um, uh, uh, we, we can, minim we can uh, prevent the problem. And also, if we use normal, half normal um, prior with scale parameter one, we can also prevent the stack sequence behavior. And also for this stand warning, we need to com uh, uh, combine with the proposed 
diagnose to, to, so to diagnose this uh, two problematic behavior known as a minuscule and stuck chain behavior. And also this figure prevent, uh, provides uh, the, uh, the problem here. We can say if we use the uh, scale parameter, uh, smaller scale parameter for the normal distribution for the standard, standard deviation parameters, so we can prevent the, uh, minimize the issue and also the, and also, if we use the directional prior with the larger concentration parameter, we can also minimize the issue. So the uh, simulation study highlights a vague prior uh, often result in problematic behavior such as stack chain or minuscule class behavior. So if we use a more informative prior, we can largely prevent this issue. And also, um, hemotenial MC methods uh, because of uh, solely in posterior exploration may exaggerate these issues. And uh, then the pre uh, practical recommendation is uh, first uh, we avoid uh, half cauchy prior for the standard deviation in this model, then this uh, uh, growth mixture model to reduce the likelihood of stack chain B sequence and the minuscule class behavior. And then we start, uh, start with uh, less informative prior and uh, adjust uh, the parameter based on the diagnostic tools we just provide. And also uh, we chose weekly informative prior must be chosen. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and also we use the, uh, we suggest uh, to use uh, uh, sensitivity analysis uh, to assess the impact of uh, prior on the final result, uh, ensuring the robust and the accuracy of our inference. So uh, for this, um, if you have further questions, you can refer to this email and also you can access the code diagnostic tools and also stand code uh, uh, and also additional resources uh, through this uh, GitHub link. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. So I, I don't know if you tried this, but one other way that you can try to mitigate these kinds of problems is starting with some kind of reasonable initialization. Oh uh, yes. So were you just using random initializations, or did you try to control that too? Yeah, we tried to control that, and uh, some problematic behavior also happens. Okay. So so what happened? Like, how did you try to? Uh, we tried to use the like uh, uh, will behave the model uh, like a parameter estimates uh, mm -hmm. uh, as the initial value. Uh, yes, we use the uh, loop package to uh, find the optimal number of uh, latent classes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.